So now you have your character and your character is playing around in your game, but the camera isn't following correctly. Or maybe you have already figured out how the camera can follow the player, but it's not smooth. So in this video, you're going to learn how to make your camera move smooth and follow along with the player. And then we're going to also see how to use Lerp. Who would care about Lerp? Well, but it's useful when it comes to Unity camera movement. So let's dive right into it. All right, so first of all, you of course need to use the 3D template and you need to have a project name. Once you're in the project, you can go ahead and create a new scene. And you can call this one, for example, camera, follow demo, if you want to follow along exactly as I do here. Either way, you will see that once you are inside of the scene that you have two objects. One is the camera and the other one is the light. So we have the main camera and the directional light. So here are those two in our scene. We can see them directly. And by the way, this is Unity Monday. So if you're interested in Unity, definitely check out our content every Monday. And if you're interested in any of the other topics you can see here, of course, check out those videos as well. And please don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Now, if you want the camera to follow an object, we of course need to have an object, for example, the player. Well, therefore, we of course need to also have a 3D object that just looks pretty cool. So let's go ahead and create one. I'm just going to use a cube here, which will be my player body. So here, I'm going to call this guy player body. Also, of course, make sure that it's reset. So the position is at zero, zero, zero. I'm going to add arms and legs. And then he just needs a head. Look at this beauty. And depending on how you look at it, he has a Naruto walk. So if you consider this being the front, then he's walking like Naruto. But of course, he could also try to hug someone if you look at it from this perspective. Now I'm going to give him the beautiful name of Joe. So this is going to be my main character called Joe. And he has to have all of these parts. By the way, let's make sure that Joe is reset. So the position of Joe. And then you can put all of those elements into Joe. And that will be our beautiful Joe here. Look at him. Now we of course need a ground. So let's add a little ground here. And therefore we can use a plane. And this plane should be positioned at 0, minus 1.5 so that our Joe is on top of it. And the Z position should be 0. Now I'm going to scale it up a little bit. So 10 towards the X and Z position. When we play the game now, we can see that we can see Joe, we can see this huge plane, but that's pretty much it. And we cannot move or we cannot follow the camera because, well, if we don't move or the character doesn't move, then there's no reason for the camera to follow. So we definitely need to add a little bit of movement to the player. So let's do that. But before we do that, I think the ground looks pretty dirty. So let's add a little bit of color to it. Let's make it green and then also give our player a new material. So let's go to our assets. Let's create a new folder call this one materials and then we can go ahead and create beautiful materials here. I'm going to call this one ground material and I'm going to give it a beautiful green color and here you can of course select the green that you like. We can now just go back to our scene and drag that green onto the ground and it will automatically have this green color. And we, of course, also can change the name here from plane to ground. I'm going to add two more materials. So here I'm going to create the layer body material and another one, which will be our player material. And you could say arms and legs material or something like that. And you can play around with that. Now for the body, I'm going to use a gray ish color. And for the other parts of our beauty called Joe here, I'm going to take such a red brownish color. Okay. 
So I'm going to assign it to the head, the arm, the other arm, and the two legs. And the body will get this grayish color. So there we are. This is our beauty, Joe. And as always, make sure that you use these materials when you are outside of the play mode, because otherwise it doesn't save it. So mistakes were made. And now let's save this scene. Okay, now let's look at it and it looks a lot better. But I'm going to change the position of the camera a little bit because I don't want to look at the player just from behind. I want to have a shoulder perspective kind of thing. So I'm going to change the Y and Z position to four and minus four. And I'm going to give it a little bit of a rotation for the X axis. So you can see now we are looking at shoulder perspective, so to speak. Now let's make Joe able to move. Therefore, we of course need to add a script here. And I'm gonna call this one player movement. Quick pause. In this video, you'll learn something about C Sharp. And if you want to learn everything there is to know that you need for the fundamentals and to become a real C Sharp developer, then definitely check out my C Sharp masterclass in which you're going to learn all of the things you need to know about C Sharp. So you're gonna learn how to do the basics, how to use object-oriented programming, how to use WPF in order to create your own user interfaces, how to use databases, how to use link, how to create your own games using Unity, and a lot more. So if you want to become a real C-Sharp developer, definitely check out the link in the description below. And of course, in the assets, we should go ahead and clean things up and we should add this to the scripts folder. So we need a new folder here, which will be our scripts folder. And then we can drag our player movement script into this folder. All right, now let's edit the script a little bit. And everything we need in the script is a speed for the player, a rotation speed for the player. Then we need the X axis and Y axis. Then we need the user input and that will be input get axis vertical and get axis horizontal. And we multiply the vertical one with the player speed plus the time delta because we don't want to move 10 meters or whatever the player speed is per frame, but per second. And then we do something similar to the rotation where we just say, okay, it should be multiplied with player rotation speed as well as with the time dot delta time. So this will give us the completion time in seconds since the last frame. Now, of course, we also want to move our player. So this is going to move the object along the Z axis and this is going to rotate the player around the Y axis. Okay, let's save that script and go back to Unity. Now we can start playing the game and move our player around with the arrow keys or WASD. There we are, so I can rotate my player, I can walk around with him, maybe the rotation is a little too slow. Let's say we increase that to 360, and he can rotate one turn per second, so a lot faster, a lot smoother. But our camera is not following, so Joe, if you get out of our sight, we can't see you anymore. And you might even fall down. So how can we fix that? We want to follow our player with the camera. All right, so what we need to do is of course to create a new script. And I'm going to call this script camera follow script. So let's create a new script right here. And it's going to be camera follow script. Now let's add some code to the script so that we can finally follow the player. And therefore what we need is first of all, a target because we need to follow something, right? So overall, we have to think about what is the goal that we have here. We want the camera to follow the player. The player is going to be our target and we are going to follow it. So we need to change the transform of our camera to be where the transform of the player is, at least with a little bit of an offset so that the camera is not inside of the player, but still maintains this distance that we have. Because if we look at it, our player, is at zero, 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 and our camera is at zero, four, minus four. So we want to maintain this offset. So let's first of all add our player, and we can do that via transform. There are other ways as well, but we're just gonna do it via the transform. So we get the target object, which in our case is Joe. And then we need a little bit of offset, as I said. So let's add that as well. And this offset is going to be a vector three because we're talking about space here. 
Now we could of course try to calculate it ourselves and enter this value as we had seen this 0, 4, minus 4 for the x, y, and z coordinates or we could just use the offset that we have from the start. So let's calculate the camera offset based on the position of the camera and the position of the player. And then we're going to use something called late update. So we're not using update but late update. This is the update method that will be called after the update method was called. So it will be called every single frame, but after all of the other physics calculations and so forth have been done. And that's why we are using this for camera follow scripts in general. So that's always what you should do. And we want to get the new position and we calculate that by getting the target's position plus the offset that we had calculated earlier on here. At this point, we could just say, okay, let's do that. Let's set the position of the camera to be this new position that we just calculated. Let's look at it. Let's just see how well it transforms into a game. Therefore, of course, we need to add the script to our camera. All right, so let's add this beautiful little script that we prepared, this camera follow script to the camera. And now we need a target object and the target object is going to be our beautiful Joey, okay? And now let's test this. Okay, so you see Joey is moving and the camera is constantly at the same offset but we don't have the feeling that he's moving because it's just not smooth, right? And that's what we're gonna change now. So we're gonna add a smoothness factor and we're going to use a lerp for that because it doesn't really look like he's moving towards the front or the back or anything, he's just rotating, right? And of course, if there are no other objects around us, we don't have a feeling for distance, right? And for traveling. So let's go back and change that. Let's add a little bit of a smooth factor. Therefore, I'm going to create a new variable called smooth factor. And I'm going to set that to 0 0.5. This will take care of smoothing the camera movement. Now, of course, this by itself will not do anything. We need to add a little bit of code that will actually use the smooth factor. And what we're going to use is slurp. So we're going to sl use slurp, transform position to the new position with the smooth factor. So what is this slurp, you might wonder? Well, it's this vector3 method that spherically interpolates between two vectors. So it interpolates between A and B by amount T. The difference between this and linear interpolation, aka LERP, so you maybe have seen LERP before, is that vectors are treated as directions rather than points in space. The direction of the returned vector is interpolated by the angle and its magnitude is interpolated between the magnitudes of from and to. Okay, so basically it's going to create a smoother movement and it's going to change the value a little bit so the distance from the player to the camera by a little bit each time and by how much is what this t is and this t is our smoothness factor if we now test this you can see that we have a little bit more of a feeling of the player moving but our camera is not rotating with the player so how can we change that because this really looks odd right well, in order to achieve that, we can use something called look at. So there is this cool little feature that allows us to look at a specific target. So here we're going to create a new Boolean for that, look at target, and we're gonna set that to false by default. And then we can just add this if statement and add a little bit of camera rotation in the late update by using the look at. So we say, if look at is true, then we're just gonna use look at target object. And look at rotates the transform so the forward vector points at the target's current position. All right, perfect, that's exactly what we wanted, right? Now if we save this script and test it, then we can directly compare. So this is how it is right now. And then we add the look at, and you can see now it's looking at our character. And we can move around and the camera moves around with the player. And in order to get a little better of a feel for this, I added a bunch of objects here and you can see now we can just follow along with the player 
as he's moving. And in this case, we can follow along with Joey while he's dodging all of these cylinders. All right, so I hope this was useful. I hope you now know how to have a camera that moves smoothly behind the player and that creates this great effect of knowing where your player is. I think that makes sense in a game, right? So now you know how to do it. And I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, then please leave a like. If you loved it, then leave us up and maybe even buy the course because I have a great course when it comes to game development. There's a link in the description below and I hope to see you there. A bunch of good stuff awaiting you. So either way, see you in the next video.